Haven was settled in April of 1638 by Puritans who came from England with their families. These were large families that came to seek religious freedom in uh, the new church, which eventually became known as the Congregational Church. They settled in New Haven on the shores of the Long Island Sound, very close to what is now known as the New Haven Green. And in the center of the green, they built their church or meeting house. Over time, uh, of course, there were many deaths in these early days. People didn't have the medicines that they have today or the, the skills of doctors to help them. So we don't know how many people were buried on the green in the time it was used from 1638 until, uh, until 1797. Some people have estimated it at 5,000, but more recent investigation seems to show that there could be 10,000 people whose remains are still there on the green. Whenever human skeletal remains are uncovered in any kind of capacity, once it's reported to the police, the police bring the remains to the medical examiner's office. When they determine that the remains are 50 years old or more, part of an ancient burial that nobody knew of, uh, then I get called in as the state archaeologist and I assume uh, responsibilities for the rest of the investigation. What surprised me was that they were so shallow that a tree root could flip over and would only go down maybe not even two and a half feet and yield skeletal remains. So I was kind of surprised by that. I suspect that the green had been landscaped and graded probably in the late 1800s, and thus what was once four to six feet below ground now was only two to three feet, and thus exposed by the roots. People were buried behind the church in an area that is probably not more than a few acres at most. And so as the decades passed through the 17th into the 18th century, they began to rely on what they remembered from England, which was to start another layer, so to speak, as the graves sank. Funerals uh, were, not, were held very quickly after people died. There was no embalming at that time. And especially people who died of diseases were very often buried on the same day that they died for fear of contagion. You know, we say dead men tell, tell tales. <laughs> dead men tell tales and bones never lie. And what those bones will tell us is something, uh, even if we can't understand the individual's names, what we'll learn about them are probably life stress pathologies, diseases they've had, infections. We'll tell something about their lives that will be very important for us to understand. You know, to be able to collaborate with Yale University has been uh, just such a positive thing for us. Uh, the anthropology department here, working with Dr. Aronson and, and uh, many of the faculty and staff here, in solving these problems has been just very helpful to me as the state archaeologist. And it's a collaboration where, you know, in some way I like to say the university, you know, connects with the community. The significance of the Lincoln tree uh, toppling over in the storm and revealing the bones of at least two adults and several children in a most dramatic way showed us the significance of the New Haven Green. Uh, construction is not permitted on the green, so years and years could have gone by with us forgetting more and more about uh, the fact that it is and was a burying ground. But when the tree revealed what was in its roots very dramatically, uh, the whole world really took notice of that. When you work with these skeletal remains, it gets personal because you learn an awful lot about that individual. The traumas, the diseases, the life stress pathologies. You learn about that person's life and it becomes personal. You almost know that person in some respects. It's one thing to read in a book that people suffered from tuberculosis. It's another thing to actually see it on the bones. It brings it to life and it, it brings what, what they went through home uh, in a very, I think, a very powerful and personal way.